Hello, my name is Noella Edelman. I'm from the Danube University Krems in Austria. Uh, I'm from the Department for E-Governance and Administration. I'm a researcher there. And um, I'm also the managing editor of uh, an OJS platform. So thank you very much uh, to PKP for the opportunity to present uh, uh, some work that we've done um, recently. Um, yeah, so I'm a, I'm a researcher, so it's, my presentation is very much structured like a, like a, a research paper. And um, I'll tell you a little bit more about my background and, and my co-author's um, background in a couple of slides time. So we were interested in a certain question, and the question is what impacts open access publishing? Um, we knew we couldn't exactly measure the impact, so we considered some further research questions. So how do authors choose a publication venue or a repository? Um, and what is the role of institutional context policies and support, what are authors' perceptions on aspects of open access, such as alternative metrics, um, what is the view on academic publishing, and what is the role of digital literacy and knowledge about open access. So our perspective, the royal we, is basically Judith and mine, which uh, we are the two managing editors of the journal JADEM. JADEM is uh, the Journal of E-Democracy and Open Government. Um, we're the only two members of staff that work on this journal. Um, our main focus is on doing research, and when we have some time, we, we do the journal. And when we have some, still left some time, which is not that much, uh, we, we do research on uh, the journal. My colleague, uh, Gabriela Viale Pereira, the one at the bottom, she's from Brazil, and she came to um, our department about two years ago, and before that, she was in... Uh, Brazil, she used to manage um, OJS for, um, for her university and she used to do training. So she advised us uh, on how to conduct the research that we wanted to do. So um, JADEM is, um, is this uh, open access journal and um, some background to the research we wanted to conduct. Um, we, we were looking at uh, different types of user groups and there's been a lot of research in the last 10 years um, that there are different user groups. So there are authors, there are editors, there are reviewers, there are publishers, um, but also that there are different types of end users. So there are different types of authors, for example. And in the work by uh, Shehata et al, for example, they say that um, there are those authors who are more conservative and those those who are more progressive, and this will impact how they will want to publish their work. Um, and this also obviously impacts um, their reputation or how they feel about reputation. And thinking about reputation, it's not just about the reputation of a journal, but the reputation that uh, an author is trying to gain in uh, his or her career. Other dimensions to think about are um, motivations. Why publish with uh, a certain a certain journal. Um, this is guided by different personal and uh, institutional motivations, and there is a, a lot of uh, research on this. And finally, how they, um, how different user groups see and understand open access, open access journals and scholarly communication. Um, and there is a lot of work on this and I've just picked some out. And uh, for example, the, the research by Pivo et al, where they kind of like try to do a forecast of how much open access journals will be used in the uh, future. And finally, our, the, the, the work that I would like to present here is very much influenced by uh, workshops uh, my colleague Judy and, and I conducted. Um, CDEM is a, a conference we used to run. We, we ran it for 10 years. It's now merged with uh, an information systems um, conference. CDEM a conference for e-democracy. And um, the first one in 2016 we ran in, in, uh, in Austria. And the second one we did in Hong Kong, where we talked to our community um, and, and said, well, what do you think about open access? And how do you see open access? And what do you understand open access to be? And here we saw that there's a huge range of how open access is understood, how its quality is uh, understood, um, why different authors contribute to different publications, why they have to contribute to certain publications. Um, and on the basis of this kind of um, previous research, we decided to conduct uh, our own research. And um, 
just to kind of like reflect that when we do research on the journal, so we started thinking about doing research in 2016, and it's this year that we were actually able to do the, the, the research. So um, I would like to present the, the, the case that we, that we chose, so JADEM, um, according to the nomenclature of um, Edgar and Vilinsky. Um, so the journal topic, it's uh, general works, it's interdisciplinary. So our community is, um, so the people who work with us, we have uh, political scientists, we have legal experts, we have uh, people from IT, we have people from the social sciences. And so, so it's, very, it's a very interdisciplinary uh, community, and this is why our journal is also interdisciplinary. Um, the sponsor is the academic department, so the department where I work, and um, we have had since, uh, um, so we started the journal in 2009, and since then we have had 279 uh, submissions. This is excluding this year, and the number that we have published is 163. We have a double-blind peer review process, and we have a very small number of simply editorial reviews, for example, with, um, with invited uh, papers or with um, reflections. Um, our rejection rate or um, acceptance rate is 42%, but this includes reflections and, uh, and uh, invited papers and editorials. So actually our rejection rate is around about um, 50%. Um, the characteristics of the editors, uh, we are first time editors, also known as senior researchers. I cannot tell you how many hours per week uh, we work because we have times where we do zero. We have times, we have peaks. Uh, we are about to publish two issues in December, in the second week of December. Um, so right now our hours have soared up to the, to the sky. Uh, in terms of staff participation, part, uh, staff that is remunerated, um, there's no fee for editors, no fees for reviewers or for promotional work. The only fee we pay is for technical support offered by PKP Publishing Services, uh, the proofreaders and the designers, um, which means that we have redesigned our website for the first time this year uh, in, in 10 years. So it's... Um, there's not much money there. So uh, the sources of revenue are, are zero. Uh, subscriptions are increasing. So we have increasingly a number of uh, submissions. Um, and we are a gold open access journal. So there is no fees for reading the articles and there are no fees for uh, submitting an article. We had 2,550 registers. Uh, users and as mentioned before, our expenses are proofreading the PKP annual fee. Um, Previously, we had the external technical support um, and uh, the redesign that we had this year. So, um, using again the nomenclature from um, Vilinsky and uh, from Edgar Vilinsky, we're a newish, independent, minimal or rather no budget journal with a high-ish rejection rate from a developed continent. Uh, we have been around since 2009, um, and um, until May this year, we used OJS 2.4.60. Um, we are listed with EBSCO, DOAJ, Google Scholar, PKP Metadata Harvester, and DOI. Since May 2019, so since the beginning of this year, we are also registered with uh, Scopus. Uh, we also migrated to the new OJS3 platform, and after the two issues have been published in December, we will be applying uh, for um, indexing with Web of Science. So this is, you can't see the line at all, can you? Um, so in this picture, you see more or less the number of um, abstract views this year. But maybe what's more interesting is if I show you the, the number of views on, on the basis of announcements we made. So when we announced that we were registered or indexed with Scopus, we had 1,792 views. Uh, when we moved up, um, when we migrated to J J OJS3 and announced that, we had 4,132 views. Um, and then we had uh, a survey in, uh, in October. We announced this, we had 1,158 views. And, and then I sent out a reminder, and um, this generated 1,550 views. So let me tell you a bit more about the survey that we conducted. So the research tool we used is an uh, online, online survey tool um, that is developed by the Danube University Krems. Um, so we didn't need to use an external tool. Uh, we did think about um, using um, surveys that have already been published. 
Um, but because we had a very specific interest, um, we wanted to know about um, our community, about our users, our registered users. Uh, we asked them about their demographic data. We wanted to know their views on academic publishing and open access. And we wanted to know their views on the Journal of uh, E-Democracy and Open Government, or JDAM. The first announcement was made on the 24th of September. We uh, had a second announcement on the 14th of October because we had a really low rate of um, answers. Uh, the email, I basically extracted the email addresses out of the OJS platform and sent off an email uh, from my um, work account. Uh, the survey was closed on the 25th of October. Now this is the most painful slide. So apologies if I start crying. What was the response rate? We had 57 responses from 2,550 users. So that is a response rate of 3.3. Um, what can I tell you about these people who um, actually answered our survey? So uh, the majority, 72% were male, 28% were female. They were aged, the majority, so 64% were between the years of uh, 35 and 40 and 54. Um, the majority of them come from higher education, some from the public sector, which reflects the kind of people we work because we work uh, together with public administration. 74% um, were at least a PhD candidate. 47% uh, uh, described themselves as uh, researchers. So what are the results that I can present to you? We, the, the, the survey was a combination of quantitative and qualitative questions. So um, in terms of um, what we could derive from, the, from, from their open-ended questions is um, what do they like about academic publishing, uh, understanding the phenomena they, they are working on in order to learn. Um, it's about staying up to date. Um, and about co-creating, uh, sharing knowledge, uh, about um, their, the, 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 their ideas and their content being uh, um, circulated globally. Um, it's about being part of the community and about uh, sharing again. And yeah, promotion of work and accomplishment and receiving recognition for the work that you have done. What do they not like about academic publishing? The long publication procedures, a long review process, um, the workload that writing a paper um, uh, involves. Um, they didn't like paywalls, uh, they had problems um, with public accessibility. Um, so how about open access publishing? So this was really interesting because then we asked them what kind of open access strategy their university has or their funding agency has. And this is which is really surprising because um, they have, so 22% uh, work for an institution that has an open access strategy. Um, publication in an open access journal is encouraged, but 30% um, of the people who work there are in institutions where there is no um, open access strategy. And then what are the most three important things about uh, publishing open access? One is the high availability and visibility of the paper. Um, the other thing that's very important is the journal reputation and high citation impact. So I think these are all things that you more or less know. Um, I, I you know, feel I'm like I'm preaching to people who already know all of this, but for us it was interesting. Um, what was interesting in comparison to the results that we gained from our workshops in 2016 is that 43% rate the quality of open access articles as good. This was really surprising for us. Um, what else about open access publishing? Yeah, so how familiar are they with Plan S? I have to admit that I only heard about um, Diamond open access here at this conference, but I thought that at least in the research and academic community, um, a lot of people would be already aware about Plan S. 20% um, know about it. 12% um, have heard about it, but are not sure what it is and what it means for their work. And 67% said no. Um, what about being uh, familiar with Altmetrics? Again, a similar kind of picture. Um, they know 20% knows what it is and what it means for their, for their work, for distributing their work. Um, they have heard, 18% have heard of Altmetric but have no idea how it impacts their work. And nearly 60% have no idea about Altmetrics. So um, what's interesting is because in a later question, they say 69% uh, say they know enough about open access publishing to make proper decisions for their academic 
academic life. So when you think in context of the results I showed you before, this is, this is really quite scary. So what do they like about open access publishing? Well, um, because we work in an in a, in a, um, area which is very digital, it has a lot of connections to, to uh, digital tools and digital transformation, they find that open access, is, is, there's a strong affinity to, to the work they do in their, um, and, and their research area. Um, they, they, they like the values behind open access. Um, they think it has high academic standard. Um, and uh, they, they like that open access is now indexed with uh, certain uh, organizations such as Scopus and with um, uh, Web of Science. But at the same time, they criticize this as well. Uh, what do they not like about open access publishing? That sometimes the, 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 the good journals, they're not in, in their uh, area of work. Um, interesting at the same time that they have, uh, they're not indexed with uh, uh, Web of Science or with uh, Scopus and um, some of their, their papers haven't been accepted yet. Yeah? So uh, standards uh, for open access can sometimes be quite high. Um, sorry, we have the... So, oh, I'm going the wrong way, I'm sorry. This is. So, some preliminary conclusions from, from this research. So, what are the factors that are important in open access publishing? Well, the institutional context um, and the institutional support play, um, play an important role. But in our target group, it seems that there are other factors that impact the target group a lot more. So, there are societal factors which play um, an important role. Um, so, the, so, the values behind open access, um, about uh, sharing knowledge, about co-creation, uh, the role of indexes and visibility, um, being aware that there are different types of users of open access and also of understanding open access. So we have had that phenomenon that open access means everything from being online to, uh, to being open source. And um, it's also important to consider the impact of digitalization on scholarly communication. Um, personal strategies do matter as well. Um, so the digital literacy, uh, they, they, they have, do they know what Altmetrics is or, or not? Um, their personal situation, um, how, how uh, open access uh, affects them in their research area and um, in their career path. So some limitations about this. So this is my last slide, or my second last slide. Um, so this was a huge limitation, obviously. So I can't generalize these, these results, right? Um, this was a real big setback. Um, but this also made clear to us that we, with the platform that we are using, we cannot reach our users. We cannot, the, the, the tools that we, that we were using were not suitable to access, uh, to interact, to engage with our community. And we need to know more about the authors, what the authors' interests are. Uh, we need to know um, about the reviewers, what the reviewers want to, want to review. Um, so we need to know what... Um, what authors need to know. At the same time, um, we need to um, find a way of, of, of reaching and engaging uh, these users. So our aim here is to kind of like exchange experiences with you. How have you reached out to your community? How have you been able to, to access how and interact and engage with them um, about how to manage this community? We would be very interested in, in your experiences and um, how to position an academic journal in the digital market. So um, if, you, if you have any suggestions, any ideas, um, please let me know. And now my very last slide, it's about uh, two emails which are currently in my inbox. One is by Spring and Nature and the other one is by another journal. And, and they're very much there to, um, they want to know about me. So I don't think I'm doing something that is so strange. Um, all the big publishers are wanting to know more about their users in order to kind of like tailor um, what, they, what they offer and, and we would like to be able to do that. So if the big ones are doing it, we want to do it as well. So thank you very much. Um, yeah, questions I think come afterwards.